In our discussion on the cytoskeleton of eukaryotic cells, we briefly mention a structure known as the centrosome. But what exactly is the centrosome and what are its functions? These are the questions that we're going to address in this lecture. So the centrosome is our microtubule organizing center of eukaryotic cells, also known as MTOC. Now, one centrosome is found per eukaryotic cells, and only animal eukaryotic cells have our centrosomes. Plant cells and fungi do not have centrosomes. They have other structures that are responsible for building microtubules, building and organizing microtubules. Now, every single one of our centrosome in any given eukaryotic animal cell consists of a pair of two centrioles that are oriented at a 90 degree angle with respect to one another. And these two centrioles are basically embedded in hundreds of proteins. So let's suppose this is our eukaryotic animal cell. So this is our nucleus. And right next to our nucleus, we have the centrosome. So we have hundreds of proteins in this space. We have a condensed mass of proteins and inside that protein, proteins, we have two centrioles that are oriented at a 90 degree angle with respect to one another. And we also have these microtubules that permeate throughout the entire cell. Now, what exactly is the function of our centrosome? The centrosome basically functions in our cell cycle. It helps the cell divide. So during our interface of the cell cycle, we replicate our centrosome. And during our prophase, the centrosome basically migrates to both ends and then they create or extend those microtubules that grab our chromosomes and separate those chromosomes during cell division. Now, the centrosome is also involved in organizing and creating and extending the microtubules that constitute our cytoskeleton. Remember, uh, uh, the cytoskeleton is basically the scaffolding of our cell. It gives the cell structure and it gives the cell its shape. And there are three different types of fibers and one of these fibers are our microtubule fibers. So. Within our centrosome, we have our centrioles. What exactly is a centriole? So the, centri uh, the centrosome contains a pair of centrioles that are a cylindrical array of nine triplet microtubules that are connected to one another by special protein connecting fibers. Now, this pattern is commonly known as the nine to three microtubule pattern. And we see that the centrioles are simply specialized structures, specialized microtubule structures. Now, what exactly is the structure of our centriole? What exactly does it look like? Well, it looks something like this. We have the top to bottom view of our centriole and the side view of the centriole. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine triplets. Each one of these uh, consists of, not, of uh, three of these individual microtubules and each one of these triplets is connected by our connective protein fiber. Now if we take this centriole and we flip it this way, we rotate it sideways, we get the following side view. So we have the nine triplets that are connected by these purple regions, our fibers. So now that we know what the centrosome is and what the centriole is, what exactly is the function of our centriole that are found within our centrosome? So we have three very important functions. So function number one is basically what we mentioned earlier. The centrioles which are found inside the centrosome are involved in cell division and separating our chromosomes during our cell cycle. So 
centrioles are involved in the formation of mitotic spindle fibers during cell division. However, recent evidence shows that if we actually destroy our centrioles, our cell cycle still takes place, mitosis still takes place. So basically, we can imagine that centrioles make our separation of chromosomes very efficient. However, they are not exactly necessary for mitosis to actually take place. Now, what exactly is the second function of the centriole? Well, basically, the centriole is our region that extends and creates those microtubules, and microtubules compose our, <clears throat> our cytoskeleton. Now, the cytoskeleton is basically responsible for arranging and organizing the organelles found inside our cell. So we see that the placement of the centrioles within the cell determines the position and location of the nucleus as well as the other organelles inside our body. And that's exactly why the centrosome that contains the centrioles is found right next to our nucleus. In fact, inside neuron cells, the location of our centrosome basically determines into which direction the axon will grow on any given neuron cell. So this makes sense because the microtubules are the largest and the thickest components, the thickest fibers of our cytoskeleton. Remember, the cytoskeleton is composed of three different types of fibers. We have microfilaments, intermediate filaments, and our microtubules. And finally, the third function of the centriole. So the centrioles are responsible for forming the flagella and the cilia that our cells have. So one of the centrioles, remember we have two centrioles, one centriole is called the daughter centriole, the other centriole is called the mother centriole. So it's the mother centriole that can develop into the basal body. And the basal body is basically the structure in the cell that is responsible for forming cilia as well as flagella. And cilia and flagella are two types of specialized structures that basically allow the cell to move. They mobilize the cell. So we see that all those centrioles are not exactly necessary for the survivor of the individual cell. The centrioles and centrosomes are necessary for the survival of the organism as a whole. For example, if we examine a specific type of cell that needs flagella, our sperm cells, if, if, um, if our sperm cells do not have centrioles or centrosomes, they cannot form our basal body and they cannot form the flagella. And a sperm cell without a flagella will not be able to reach the target cell and that means our organism will essentially die off. It will not survive, although maybe individually the cells will in fact survive.